Conversations with Nicole, and we are here at Nefertari's Fine Cuisine, and my very special guest is the Florida State University men's basketball coach, Coach Leonard Hamilton. Welcome, Coach Hamilton. Well, thank you very much. So, Coach, you have been in Tallahassee for how long? This is uh, going on blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's my 18th year coming up, I believe. Okay, good yeah. deal, good deal. I've been here for a while. About you, where you from? You know your education. Just, just a brief synopsis. Well, I'm just an old country boy from Gaston, in North Carolina. Okay. You know, uh, from a big family. Uh, never lived uh, more than 50 yards from my church. I grew up in it. Every time the door opened, we were in it. Okay. Um, you know, my mother and father were were hardworking people, and uh, had three brothers and one sister in my immediate family. But I had a big family because my mother's first husband passed, and I had three brothers and a sister. So we, we just had a big family and a lot of love and uh, uh, a lot of affection. Nice, nice. So you left Gastonia and went where? Well, I, I, I had the fortunate opportunity to uh, open up a school uh, at Gaston Community College, a local school, to play, be on their first basketball team rather than go to the Army. I ended up going to play for them. And so it kind of started my career off uh, from an academic standpoint. My mother and father, my mother went to the seventh grade, my father went to the ninth grade. And so they had some challenges, you know, getting good jobs, and they always emphasized that uh, education was important. Mm -hmm. So that was a tremendous opportunity for me. From there, I had a unique and special opportunity to go to the University of Tennessee at Martin. Okay. And back in those days, uh, uh, integration was just starting to be popular mm -hmm. and I integrated both of those schools uh, first black athlete oh, wow. to play at both of those schools and, and uh, the UT Martin gave me a unique experience uh, being away from home and, uh, that was that worked out well for me and I uh, got my undergraduate degree there and had an opportunity to to uh, fortunate enough to get a graduate assistant job at Austin Peay State University which ended up leading into my first assistant basketball coaching job so I've, I've had a good run from there at the University of Kentucky and in you know, Oklahoma State. So I've been so fortunate. Mm -hmm. I always tell people I believe my steps have always been ordered. Mm -hmm. I've always had, seemed like a hedge of protection around me. Whenever I had to make important decisions in my life, I always seem to have something guiding me in the right direction and uh, things of, uh, of, I've had a good life and a good run and I'm very fortunate. And what this young people say, I don't get it twisted. You know, I know why I'm where I am because I've been fortunate enough to be, my path has been guided by the man upstairs. All right, I love that. Mm -hmm. So, family, you married, yes? Married, I have two wonderful youngsters. Mm -hmm. uh, not youngsters anymore. Right. I have a daughter who went to grad Florida State, uh, and uh, she got an undergraduate degree here, a couple of degrees from Columbia, and a PhD from NYU. Her name is Allison, she's an artist, and she does uh, a few other things. Uh, she's an entrepreneur, okay. so to speak. My son is, is a musician, a writer, composer, uh, producer, and he lives in Miami. All right. My wife, Claudette, uh, has a, a Bible study fellowship a class of about 200 women that she uh, ministers to. Wow. And from all churches, all denominations here in Tallahassee. And she has a, a group of ladies that she ministers to every Tuesday night. And uh, so they have a real thriving uh, Bible study group that she's in charge of. And it, it helps me because I always have 200 women praying for me every time we play. <laughs> that is quite helpful. <laughs> wow, okay. So what prompted you to get into coaching? Well, be very honest with you, once again, it, it's just uh, opportunity, and I was going to go join the Marines, to be honest with you. 
and the opportunity came for me to be um, a part of going to get my graduate degree at Austin Peay State University. And it just seemed as though just when I was starting to trying to make a decision that maybe wasn't the right one, God always gave me another opportunity. Mm -hmm. So going to Austin P was so helpful to me because I had an opportunity to finish my degree, get my master's degree, but also that involved into an opportunity to be for assistant coach job and that kind of spearheaded, spearheaded my career. Okay. Now, what was your first head coach position? When I, I went from Austin P, and it's, it's a very interesting story that is really detailed. Uh, back in those days, it, I was the first African American coach there at Austin P. Around what year was that? Oh, that's 1971. Wow. 71. And, um, but uh, I actually resigned that position and tried to get out of coaching. But as, as, life, it, huh? as life would have it, I took a job, I resigned on a, on a Wednesday, uh, in the paper on Thursday, I moved on Friday and went to work on Monday in Charlotte, North Carolina with Dow Chemical. Uh, so you would think, well, you know, that was a knee jerk reaction, but I was just, the opportunities for me as an African American coach was not available for me. And, and I, I had a, a reacted to a situation that I think was healthy for me. But uh, on that Monday, first day I went on the job, the head coach from University of Kentucky called me. And so Tuesday, after starting work with Doc Chemical on Monday, I was in Lexington, Kentucky on Tuesday, <laughs> interviewing for a job there. Wow. And, we, we, and the, the ironic thing is that Kentucky was the number one basketball program in the history of college basketball. So I went from not coaching to going to, 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 the, to, number to, one. to the number one program in the history of college basketball. That's divine intervention. That is definitely <laughs> divine inter intervention. Amazing, amazing. So how did you navigate being the first African-American coach or you know, first Af African-American athlete in some of these different arenas? Well, I think it all started as a child uh, with the, uh, the influence of my father and my mother. Uh, I was probably the right person for those opportunities and I think those opportunities needed someone like me. So I think it was a good match for both of us. Okay. I, I, I had a, a solid foundation, morally sound. I uh, spent all my time in the church and gosh, I don't ever remember not going to church. I probably have missed very few Sundays in my entire life by not being involved in some ministry on a Sunday somewhere. Okay. Uh, doing, as a child growing up, Sunday school, Bible school, BTU, mm -hmm. Vacation Bible School, the Youth Choir, the Urshan Boys. You say? Well, you know, I do a little something, something. <laughs> <laughs> they make a joyful noise, right? <laughs> not, a, not an awful noise, a joyful a noise. A joyful okay. noise yeah. to the Lord. But, but uh, in reality, though, I thought that that really gave me a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. My mother always told me, think before you speak. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a sound philosophy of thinking things through because of those, those, in those days, uh, things were not always, uh, you know, the colored water fountain, the, the colored bathroom, the, 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 the sitting up in the balcony at the, at the, at the, at the movie theaters it was somewhat challenging mm -hmm. uh, for a youngster back in those days. But I think I had the stability and the maturity to deal with it and handle it. And I think I realized that, you know, how I responded to those, those situations uh, would make a difference in the uh, people who follow after me. Uh, but having the opportunity, you know, to be with a father who uh, always told me, don't ever let anybody outwork you. And, and that has meant so much to me because he always said that your boss, your supervisor, your coach could possibly make a mistake. So if you let it be close, it's on you. Mm -hmm. And so I never really had anyone to complain to. And I, don't real, I didn't realize how much, how important that would be to me mm -hmm. uh, as I moved through my, my career. But because I always had to work hard and I could never make any excuses to come home to him and complain to why certain things didn't work out well, that, that gave you only one option. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to be focused enough to see the, a way how to become successful. And whenever you had a challenge, you always had to come up with a philosophy, there's a solution for every problem. Fortunately for me, I've been able to navigate through life and, and, and hang on in there. <laughs> very good advice, very good advice. Well, we're gonna take a break right here, but when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about who Coach Leonard Hamilton is. Okay. All right, stay tuned for more conversation. Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. If you're
you're just joining us, my special guest today is Coach Leonard Hamilton, the men's basketball coach at FSU. So, Coach Hamilton, before the break, you were telling me about some of your experiences and and about, um, you know, just the advice that your, your, your parents gave you, your mother, your father. But I want to know, what role has faith played in your life? Well, I think any time you, in, you're working with young people and you're representing uh, academic institutions, you know, the moral compass is a very, very important. And I think the, having a good faith foundation, doing what's right, at least trying to do what's right, uh, is, is the way that you have to work with young people. Because anytime you uh, have the responsibility of, of, of taking young men from teenagers to young adulthood, it's almost like you're their surrogate family, you're their surrogate father, and they basically going to emulate the relationship that you have with them. Yeah. And so you, it's, a, that, it's a full job, a, a lot of responsibility uh, of, of taking young men at the most vulnerable time in their life when they're forming ideas of, of what kind of husbands they're going to be, what kind of fathers, mm. what kind of neighbors, what kind of citizens they're going to be. And from a basketball coaching standpoint, you know, we sometimes publicly are evaluated by wins and losses. But our true evaluation <clears throat> comes when youngsters leave you four or five years, what are they doing with their lives? Have you impacted them to the point where they find a way how to make decisions, how to negotiate through challenges, and, 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 and what type of uh, family uh, men are they? Are they leading their families? Are they uh, are making progress toward reaching their potential? Anytime you have young people and you, you're charged with the responsibility of them maturing and reaching their fullest potential physically on the basketball court, but also mentally and emotionally and spiritually off the court, you, you, no one wants to be uh, uncomfortable. But you have to challenge youngsters uh, to reach their potential, and nobody wants to be uncomfortable, but you have charged with the responsibility of trying to get them out of their comfort zone to challenge their potential to reach their potential. And yeah. so in order to do that, you have to have a strong, strong relationship with them, one which they understand your passion, your encouragement, uh, uh, your demanding of, of excellence from them. And there has to be a level of trust. It has to have be a level of trust, but so you have to form those relationships. And sometimes those things are somewhat challenging mm -hmm. because each player is an individual. You can't treat them all the same, but, but as a coach, uh, you have to have a phone faithful background, in my opinion, in order to be able to relate to all the different challenges you have. If your heart's in the right place and you really treat them uh, like you'd want someone to treat your child if your role. child's with them. Mm -hmm. And that's how we normally operate. Okay. Uh, we feel that if we are treating all our players like we want someone to treat our children if they were with them, it's a good basis and a foundation to, to, for, to build programs and then have a personal relationship with your players. Outstanding. Would you say, would you attribute that to your high graduation rate amongst your players? Well, I think part of the relationships, you have to hold everybody accountable. We are held accountable, and your, your players have to be held accountable. We have rules and regulations that govern our behavior mm -hmm. on the court, off the court, as well as academically. And, and some things are just non-negotiable, you know, and you have to hold everybody to a certain standard and they understand what they are. And so we talk about them, we explain them, we have a clear understanding of exactly what that means. And I think I'm very proud of the fact that our guys respond appropriately because we, we, we are in all of this together. And I'm proud of the fact that we are graduating our players at a high rate. But in reality, that's a lot more important than anything else we're doing. Yes. You're judged by whether you win and lose games. But you, but in your graduation rate, you run, you run you're judged by winning in life. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's more important uh, than the wins and losses on the court. However, you need to win, you need to have the wins to make sure you keep your job so you can have an opportunity to work with the youngsters. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Speaking of winning, you are the most winningest coach at Florida State basketball. How did, what, again, what do you attribute to that? Well, I think once again, we make pretty good decisions about the youngsters we bring in, but I have a wonderful staff. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have a great staff and Coach Jones been with me almost 23 years. Dennis Gates was a graduate assistant in my program. Since uh, 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 Charlton Young, <laughs> I recruited him out of high school, believe it or not, that's how old I am. My weight training conditioning coach, 
Michael Bradley been with me for 17, 18 years. Wow. Uh, maybe more, even more than that. Uh, Jacob Ryden now has been with me uh, 10 or 12 years. I have an experienced staff that cares about our kids, uh, and we understand the responsibility that we have in representing not only who we are and where we're from, but Florida State, uh, Florida State University, Seminole Nation, and the Tallahassee community. All right, that's great. Now, you also were a professional basketball coach. Tell me your, your choice of college versus professional. Well, I don't think there's any um, um, doubt that I, I'm better suited for working with young people okay. than I am working with people who are already at a certain successful point in their life. I, I think my calling uh, is, is to be able to take youngsters who need different things. I mean, some of them need uh, maturity in certain areas. Some of them need confidence. Some of them need to see reassuring. Some of them need physically developing. I, I, I enjoy what I do every day. Uh, I'm, 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 I don't feel like I'm going to work. I, I feel like I'm going uh, almost a ministry that we take everything seriously and we try to be thorough in our approach. Uh, and I enjoy what, what I do every day. And, and I hope that I can be able to end my career coaching at Florida State on the college level. All right, <laughs> y'all heard that, right? He wants to end it at Florida State. So hopefully he'll be around for quite a while. I think you still got some, some um, years to go, Coach. We were close this year um, with the finals. Well, that's our goal. Uh, every coach in America starts off the year wanting to win a national title. And we've been knocking on the door the last couple of years. We have. Now, this year we're going to try to kick the door down. All right, I love it. Well, we look forward to that. We look forward to that. So let's talk about your passion off the court. What are you passionate about off the court? Well, you know, I, I don't have very much time off the court. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a job that's 24-7, um, you know, you, and when you build in programs in a conference like the ACC, where you have some of the most rich, traditional, successful basketball programs in your history of college basketball, you know, when everyone else is vacationing and not working, you need to be working trying to catch up. Right. And when you enjoy what you do, I mean, I, this is what we do as a staff. Um, I love gospel music. That's probably uh, the biggest passion that I have. Okay. And I find that it relaxes me. I, by growing up in the church and uh, singing in the choir and just being around it, uh, that's part of our culture. Uh, part of who we are, and uh, I've all, it's always been something that I enjoy. I enjoy. Uh -huh. I um, one of the, my probably the only pastime I have is that I like searching through YouTube and listening to uh, gospel programs from all over the country, and it's always interesting to me to see the different people in different locations and the passion that that, that they worship. Uh, God with uh, their commitment to uh, to spread the word, mm -hmm. and I find it very interesting because I, be, regardless of whether or not it's a program in in uh, Sumter, South Carolina, or Augusta, Georgia, or Albany, or some little small town in Mississippi, you see that same love mm -hmm. and passion of spreading the word, spreading and that's word. it's something that I really enjoy doing. So a lot of times I'm just surfing from one program to another to another okay. and that's something that I really enjoy doing. Excellent. All right, so we are at Nefertari's. Mm -hmm. So we got to talk about food. Okay. What is your favorite either type of food or dish? Well, being raised in North Carolina, uh, my father called himself a gourmet chef, which is, is a country chef is probably what it was. Okay. You know, I, I enjoy the simple things. I enjoy vegetables. I enjoy baked and grilled fish, chicken, turkey. You know, I, I love salads. Um, you know, and, and I have a few recipes that have been passed down uh, that I'm a little famous for. You could. You know, uh, I've, had peop I've had men call me at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning because their wives still be sucking on the bones after they leave my house. <laughs> I can't you, Coach. Okay. Uh, yeah, but no, I have, I, I have a few. He, he looked at me seriously about that, Joe. He I have a few seriously. casserole dishes that. Okay. That uh, uh -huh. that uh, if I put the food on there, 
The, the clay to be so clean, I probably can use it for somebody else. Won't have to wash it. Wow, they wouldn't even know. No, nope, wouldn't know the difference. Goodness. Okay. All right. I'm going to translate. <laughs> I'm going. To, I'm, going to, I'm a little. I'm a little. Uh, yeah, at a loss for words on that one. Okay. <laughs> I may have to taste one of these just okay, to see right, if you hey. can back up this. Uh, hey, all right. Uh huh. This this claim that you're making. Uh, my, my reputation uh, speaks for itself. Okay. I have plenty of witnesses that can okay, claim. All right. When my players come to my house, if I don't have, I have this one dish called corn pudding that I whip up for them when they come. If I don't have that, they're very disappointed. All right, all right, corn and at Christmas pudding. and at holidays, uh, my family would be very disappointed if, you don't have that if I don't have a little something, something okay, for them, something under, something you know, the, yeah, uh -huh. to enjoy. Okay. All right, all right. Okay, so let's talk spice or flavor. If you could describe your life as a flavor or a spice, what would it be? A flavor of spice, wow. Yes. I think that uh, hot sauce. Hot sauce. Yeah, I think I'm passionate about what I do. I think, I, I think I'm a, I have a little energy. People have a tendency to misread me and my personality because what they see me on the basketball coach, on, on, on how they see me on the basketball floor. Uh, because I, I have a focused look. You are look. intense. You and, are and, intense on that court. But I, actually, I have been to many a game and seen you very intense on but, that court. But please tell everybody, I do have a little personality. He does. I'm not as dry and, and solemn and focused. He does. As I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I can be a little fun. You can be. Yeah, I can tell jokes too. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll tell you some jokes off the air. Okay. okay? okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a break right here. Right. <laughs> Stay tuned for more conversations. Welcome to our CWN Clean and Healthy Eating segment with O'Neill Brown, the... Fitness Preacher. All right, Fitness Preacher. So what <laughs> concoction do you have going on here today? Well, since we live in Florida, right? Yes, we do. Hey, the Sunshine State, right? Sunshine State. So guess what? The Sunshine Citrus Punch. Sunshine Citrus Punch. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's in this Sunshine Citrus Punch? We have orange... Okay. Grapefruit, Orange. and then we add our ginger. Grapefruit and ginger. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and we put this in the juicer. Yes, you peel your grapefruit, and also you peel your orange right. and put it right into the mm -hmm. juicer, okay. and then you add your ginger to it. Okay. The ginger does that have to be peeled as well? Or? No, the ginger doesn't have to be peeled. You can peeled. put that. So mm -hmm. one one grapefruit, one orange, and about a two inch piece of ginger. Yes. Okay. And it good. depends on how many servings you want. It depends on how many people you're making it for. Okay. And, Very good. Mm -hmm. And what are the benefits of this? citrus punch the citrus vitamin what c, c. Uh -huh. that's right okay all right <laughs> and, and, and it's also good with inflammation mm. it's also good with inflammation okay. so yeah, yeah. think about healthy think about how healthy you want to be in on the uh, inside mm -hmm. so if you're putting healthy things in on the inside it automatically is going to what show on the outside healthiness <laughs> on the outside absolutely mm -hmm. all right so this is our finished product yes it is all right so let's give it a go cheers Hmm, that's good. Yeah. That's good, that's good. And the ginger gives us just a little kick. kick yep. Yeah, not too much, but just a little kick. All right. So would you, you know, substitute this for any meal or would you use it with a meal or? Well, you could like in the morning when you wake up, I would say, you know, you want to have a drink. This is a nice drink to okay. jumpstart your morning. First, okay. drink your water to okay. start your day off with drinking your water. And then maybe take some sunshine, sunshine. citrus punch. Exactly. Very good. Very <laughs> good. So how can folks get in contact with you? Well, you can contact me through my email at obrown72 at yahoo.com. And I'm also on Facebook, OBFit. And also my Instagram is OBFit underscore the fitness preacher. All right. Well, this is a great taste of Florida sunshine. Yes. So I want to thank you for sharing this with me. And you see how colorful it is? It, it is brings life to your body. It does. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned for more conversations. Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. As you can see, our dessert is here. I want to thank you, Coach Hamilton, for joining me today and 
Showing us a, a different side of me that's not so intense, <laughs> the hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've enjoyed being on this show. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't get a chance to um, get myself involved in the community very much. So I really appreciate the opportunity to come on, on the show. And, and I'm available anytime you want me to come back. All right, y'all heard that. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that okay. and some of that corn pudding. Right. I have a few more dishes I okay. can make. Right. Y'all heard that. Well, maybe what we'll do is come out to my house and then I'll, I'll cook look, it up for a look, weekend. Look, we can make that happen. You ain't said nothing but the all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, again, I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. And thank you all for tuning in for, with Conversations with Nicole, where we're connecting the community through conversations. We'll see you next time because we're about to dig into this pie. Conversations <laughs> with Nicole. Conversations with Nicole.